Our relationships have taken some serious hits with the COVID-19 lockdown. Here to talk sex and how to stay connected with your partner is sexologist and relationship expert, Dr. Jess. Hey, Dr. Jess. Hey, thanks so much for having me. It's good to see you. So listen, we're in COVID-19. Couples are having uh, some difficult moments. Do you find that people are having less sex or more sex during the lockdown? Uh, well, for many couples, sex is really the farthest thing from our minds. And it's weird because this is counter to what many of us were expecting. When we went into lockdown in March, we were so focused on thriving and growing and improving and making the best of our bodies and our baking skills and our relationships. But that just hasn't happened. Unlike our single counterparts, many of whom are craving more sex, maybe because of the economy of scarcity, <laughs> You know, couples have really lost interest in sex because of the stress, because of the fami familiarity and the exhaustion from being online, because the video meetings are just so emotionally draining, right? All of our social cues are thrown off by delays and interruptions. Then you're watching yourself being watched, which maybe you and I are used to, <laughs> but most people are not. It can make you feel very self-conscious. And so by the time we get to our partners at the end of the day, we've run out of patience and energy. Do you think uh, because people are spending more time at home and working from home that home itself is a less, less appealing place to have sex? I think the familiarity and the proximity of working from home really sucks the potential out of excitement and passion for the environment. Yeah, it's, you know, it's comfortable during this stressful time to get to sit on your couch and wear your sweat, sweatpants. And that feels good because there are so many unknowns right now and we're all craving comfort. And comfort is a nice thing in relationships, but for many, it can quash desire. So your brain, when you're in the same environment all the time, sort of goes into autopilot. So you need to awaken it with something kind of surprising or startling, whether that's something visual like dressing up instead of just wearing your sweat sweats or something practical like planning an actual date night or you know even something sexual like experimenting with dirty talk or a toy. And incidentally, incidentally sex toy sales are on the rise. They're on the rise. What's, what's, what's going on? Who's buying all these sex toys? Uh, it's all of my friends, apparently, and all of my clients. You know, <laughs> singles are looking to take care of themselves, which I love. And couples are seeking to actually invest not only in their sex lives, but in their relationships. I think we have this, you know, erroneous idea that compatibility is something that you find with a partner, but it's really something you create through communication, but also through investment of time and effort and creativity. And that's where sex toys come in. They help you to get creative. And, you know, there are all these incredible toys now that are integrated, for example, with apps. So I can be in the garage and my partner can be up in the home office and or I could be in even another city and I can control it from afar. And when you're what living are you, wait, 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 what are you controlling? Well, I, well, <laughs> I, I don't understand this. So one's in the garage and one's in the apartment. What exactly? So what's the toy part of it? Well, one of you would wear the toy and the other, you would have permission to pair with an app on your phone. Ah. And then, uh-huh. So if, if my partner's wearing the toy, I can control it from a distance, like from another room or from another city. So when um, you have a couple who they've not had uh, toys in their relationship, right? Um, how do you bring up, like, maybe we should try this without feeling awkward or without thinking your partner may think that you're being weird? I mean, how do you have that conversation? Uh, well, one great way is to use a pop culture reference, like, oh, I saw this on the doctors, but I always say when you're introducing something new or having a tough conversation, I break it into three parts. Start with the positive, make an offer, and then make a request. So I say, oh, it feels so good when we connect like we did last weekend. I'd love to do more of that. Then I make my offer, like, is there anything you'd like to try? And an offer can also be an inquiry. And then I make my request, not a complaint, not, oh, I'm bored, or, oh, we need to spice things up, but oh, I would love to try this toy. What do you think of that? Uh, I think it would bring us closer together. I think it would help to put us both in the mood. You know, just like when you're selling something, you want to not just lead with the features, but also the benefits.